Okay, so today I am looking at the video editor known as Pitter V. Now, Pitter V has had a bit of a slow development phase, if I don't mind saying so. Uh, this was the default video editor that came with Ubuntu, uh, I think starting back in 10.04. Since then, they stripped it out again because it just wasn't getting very far anywhere quick. And uh, although it promised to be quite a good video editor, it was taking a long time about it. Uh, having said that, here we are a couple of years later, and we are at version 0.15. And with 0.15, it's uh, it seems to be much more polished, uh, a little bit more stable, and uh, it performs much better as well. So I've compiled the latest uh, PDV here from source uh, from the PDV website. Now, you don't have to do that if you're running Ubuntu. They do have a, a uh, PPA there that you can enable, and you can get the latest PDV on, uh, on the Ubuntu distribution of your choice. Uh, but however, we are running in Corora here, or Fedora, and uh, and so I compiled it from source, and it and went from uh, and it installed without a hitch, and um, so here I am. I've just got a few video clips lined up here. First thing I want to mention is that uh, in the file browser here, where you're looking for files to import, you do have options now to uh, you do have options to preview the clip that you want to import, which is nice. Uh, and then once you're finished, you just click add and then it adds them there. Now you also notice there, if you were quick on the eye, there was a progress bar that I went down here. Now that's new, uh, before it used to just hang for an indefinite period of time and then it would wake up once it was finished. Uh, so now it is more responsive in that regard and it is showing you what it's doing, which is nice. Now the other improvements that they've made is that the timeline is now much more responsive. Uh, before the, it, the timeline used to really poke around as far as, uh, importing clips, trimming them, etc. Whereas they've really cleaned that up and uh, and turn that into a much more pleasant experience. Now the other thing that I want to mention is that here on the timeline when you drag your clips from your media library onto the timeline here, uh, simple transitions can be made just by dragging two clips into each other. So then when you uh, then when you give it a spot to play back from, it will uh, cross fade those two clips. Now it's not going to do it very well in my situation because I am screen capturing at the same time and it, and it is HD video so it is going to choke a little bit. But uh, under normal circumstances it usually behaves itself pretty well. Uh, now, the other nice thing about Pitter V in recent releases is it does have effects now. Now these effects are a little bit clumsy to handle, but once you know what you're doing, they can be pretty useful. Uh, apart from the random names that they have given some of them, uh, they, they can be pretty helpful. Uh, so we've got a lot of distortion effects as well as uh, color correction ones as well as audio ones, and I really can't take the time to go through every single one here. Uh, but there is definitely some fun ones that you can play with and some more serious ones that you can use like letterboxing for example to make it look oh, What's the word like a movie and? Uh, you can uh, do all the different color correction things that you are used to So you can see here that we've got the configuration channels there uh, that you can change the uh, input and output and the gamma uh, of, uh, of all these different shots and it does put a little histogram there for you as well that you can enable or disable etc now, of course, this is all going to depend on how much you do video stuff. Now, for the new user, it's actually not that hard to understand. However, the effects are a little bit clumsy and they do require a bit of know-how. So for basic video editing, it's not a bad option, but it is, uh, let me think, it's a tiny bit clumsy to use as far as the effects are concerned. The rest of it is pretty intuitive and it is uh, adhering to most of the GNOME standards of keeping it simple and uh, and keeping it uh, accessible for the everyday user. Uh, now the other nice thing is here that of course we do have keyframeable uh, levels here on the timeline. So therefore with clips, uh, with the video side of things, you can uh, change the opacity using these using these keyframeable timeline events and it will lower the opacity of the clip and therefore it'll either expose the layer underneath or it will just uh, or it'll just darken it a bit. Now the same goes then for the audio track that you can see here. You can uh, dull or you can uh, you can uh, turn the volume up or down depending on what you want to do there. Uh, so these tools are very nice in comparison to Caden Live, for example, where everything has to be done through adding an effect onto the track. So just having basic tools like this is very helpful. Now the other thing is that, of course, the keyboard shortcuts of Pitter V haven't gone anywhere. So you can select anywhere on the timeline and hit the S key and you will get a nice clean cut. Uh, now the other cool thing is that you can now do uh, ripple edits. So basically, if I take this clip out and just delete that clip, grab this clip, drag it over here, but then, for example, I want to, uh, I'll add another clip in here just for the sake of it. 
So say if I have, if I already have my timeline already lined up here and I really don't want to mess around with the timing of this anymore, but all of my clips are sandwiched together, then what I can do is I can do a ripple, uh, ripple edit. So basically if I hold down the shift key, it will extend one with, uh, it'll extend one, uh, pushing the other one aside. And then if I hold down the control key, it will overlap the other one. So I am using up the space of the previous clip. Uh, now of course the same goes for the other side as well, where you can adjust uh, the clip size and uh, at the expense of the other clip. So basically wherever you, wherever you click, you are going to be selecting the, uh, the clip that you want. And then you can do very nice precision edits based on what you want that clip to do. So, uh, it, it has come a long way in the, in terms of the timeline. And it's great to see those improvements there. Uh, the effects library is uh, pretty extensive, but as I mentioned, it does take a bit of know-how. Now, the other nice thing that they have improved on quite a bit is the project handler. So whenever you click new project, I will say close without saving, but they do have some nice presets here, uh, whereas they didn't have that before. And it, uh, honestly, this whole side of things was extremely, extremely difficult. Uh, whereas now we've got some nice presets here of uh, what most users are going to use. Uh, and we can also change things like the audio and the uh, and the video uh, pixel size and, and pixel aspect ratio, etc. Uh, now the other cool thing is that when then when you have clips, uh, it is then very very simple to come in here, grab a clip, and then uh, once you've finished editing it on the timeline, and you can click render. Now this in the past was a very very clumsy process, uh, whereas now they do have lovely presets here that can help you out. Uh, like iPod, iPhone, the HTC, HTML5 video, what most people can use for YouTube. And we also have DVD and Blu-ray, etc. Now, the other cool thing is that when then, if you're not entirely happy with the presets that you have selected, you can come in here and change things uh, like the video codec or the video frame rate, etc. Uh, to your choosing. Now, these are all very, very nice uh, to, to the new user who doesn't know a thing about codecs before. It was a very clumsy interface, and I'm glad they've cleaned this up. Uh, also, the rendering does work this time. Oftentimes, I found that with Pitivy, you'd select some codecs, and it wouldn't really quite render it. It would just think about it for a long, long time and do nothing. Whereas nowadays, it does pretty reliably uh, render the video, and you shouldn't have any problems in that regard. And you can see here that I'm now rendering the video clip in it gives a nice little progress bar with the uh, estimated time of when it's going to finish. So that's all pretty cool stuff. Overall, Pitivy has come a long, long way in usability and stability. Um, I'll be very interested to see where this project goes in the future, but definitely worth a download if you're on the Ubuntu side of things. Uh, I don't recommend it if you're using other distributions. As it is, uh, you do have to download the, uh, the latest tarball and compile it from there. Uh, it's not an issue for all of those who know what they're doing, but for the everyday user, uh, just grab that PPA and you'll be right. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you click that like button if indeed you honestly did like the video and I will catch you next week.